Like I had a drug problem for like a few years, right? The people I was hanging out with were always people that were like getting into trouble and like drinking and doing drugs and stuff. And then when you get clean, it's like, like you can't hang out with those people anymore. So it was kind of hard for me because I had to like cut off everyone and like isolate myself. And I kind of had to do that to get clean. When I started working at Imagine, it was just a lot better because I, I had more to do and um, like I, I had like something that was like an accomplishment, you know, like I like, get up and go to work like you feel like you did something good. And I'm friends with like the people I work with, which is great. And um, I've gotten a lot of really, really good opportunities while I've been working here. So it's like kind of fulfilling, you know. The difference with where I work and most cafes is, is that it's a really supportive environment and like a learning environment. And we'll hire all kinds of people no matter what path they're going down or have been down or what's going on for them, you know, no matter if they have like disabilities or what race or sexual orientation or gender identity or are having issues with drugs or mental health or have had um, like issues with the law or, you know, it's like a really judgment-free place. We're an experiential classroom and we engage with the community, with law enforcement, with social services. We bring together vulnerable youth, young adults, to give them their first job. We give them confidence, self-esteem, to find out what their passion is, what their dream might be a transformative learning space, a stepping stone to reality. Based on a couple of other organizations in the U.S., they had a program that would put young offenders through all aspects of a restaurant, and they would teach them, and then they were an internship program. And I thought it was a fascinating model. And so I looked at that and saw how we could adapt the cafe to do something like that. That's it for me. <laughs> That's what makes this place so special, is that it's one of the first to lead that path of making it possible for people to reach out, to gain that self-respect, to gain that dignity, to gain a place where they have their own personal pride. That's so important. The hope is to inspire people and empower people and you know show them that they, they can go out and get a job and be successful and have a, a good career and no matter what um, they're going through or what they've been through or where they started or what challenges they have. I think it would be great if there was more places like my work out there because it's really awesome to contribute to what, what we have going on. It's a crisis. It's been a crisis for a long time. There's a lot of walk, a lot of talk, but not a lot of action. Hey guys, we're gonna be making Bannock today. We know there's homeless, we know there's opiate crisis, we know kids are dying, young adults, older people, they're dying out there and that's not okay. We know there's funding available to help with homelessness, but how are they gonna sustain that? Funding comes and goes. We need a sustainable business or more sustainable businesses that know how to work with people of any age that have these issues and concerns. We can help them, employ them, and get them back into the mainstream society. But it's not going to happen unless we change our behavior and the way we do things as a, as a group, community, business, the world. We see things differently through a different lens. Maybe that's a bit like life. When you actually remove all the things that have happened to us, we find a good, strong foundation, and we can rebuild from there. I've come a long way in the past year. Um, like I said, I'm almost a year clean and I'm, I'm super proud about that. And I'm just, I'm really happy with how I'm doing right now. And I'm excited for, you know, what's to come in the future. So yeah, I'm really proud of that. <laughs>